Hey, howdy, how are we doing, everyone? Um, how are we doing? I guess I've already said that, but what we're doing this week is we're going to be looking to my King Badger, as you can see on the screen right now. Hopefully, I'll get into this in a second. You can see my process, but as usual, started on Pencil Sketch, went to Procreate, and then touched it up on Photoshop. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Let's go. Right, so jumping straight into Procreate here. I did it all portrait this time, so that's why you got the, uh, the, the black bars on the side staring at you as I did this, but as usual, start on there, did it, then uh, copied it over, just so I got that nice mirror, then working with the mirror function, I think it's under the settings and looking into uh, drawing assist symmetry, I just kind of sketched out with a nice pink to make it stand out, and I uh, messed around with different ideas, different symbols, what I was looking for, and just played around until I was happy. Once I got that, again, working into the pen stage, I think it's the Procreate pen. I have one called the Swoosher, which has got a lot of streamline on it. Helps with the smoothness of the curves and move sections around. Uh, working on this, I never didn't. I actually didn't really think of what it was going to be. First started as a badger, as one of my favourite animals. Then I went into and decided to make it a king badger. Badger, badger. That's why I started adding this royal purple in to get that kind of idea of uh, importance of royalty. Messing around, you can see the symmetry tool coming in the clutch there. It took me a while to really get the ideas, but of course, we're going contrasting colours, so purple and our, uh, our purple and our yellow, I should say, really looking standing out there. The nose took me a while before I could get it. I started out with the blue, moved some other ones. I wasn't really happy, but hey, yeah, what are you going to do? It wasn't until I had the shadows, I actually fell in love with it. Always keeping that love heart as well. A little bit of, uh, I guess you could say, dark pink, almost maroony, very rich, magenta, probably a better word, playing around with it. But yeah, that was kind of the main thing. Got the eyes kind of laid out, done. Had to write down front on for my light, just so I never forget. Which is quite normal for my symmetry ones. I always have the light coming from one side so then I know it's perfectly symmetrical. Messing around, of course, with the, uh, the shadows is always the fun part. It's the first layer, which is just me thinking, how will my piece interact with it? What areas do I really want to you know, show off? And what textures have I got to show? For example, obviously, because it's got a lot more fur on it. I then have to do a bit more like jaggedy lines, I'd say, almost triangles, to get that idea of there being um, an underlying texture to it. But yeah, that's not too bad. It's really into the second layer of shadows when it becomes more alive because it's the three dimensionality that I think of anyway. You know, you got the your flat colors, your first shadows, and that adds a tiny bit of depth. It was really the crown, I think, that sold it to me though, because you could actually see the top down uh, on a star because of the way it was placed, it kind of looks like it's a three dimensional piece. And as now I'm looking at this editing it uh, about two or two, two or so weeks later, I guess, I really started to realise how much I enjoyed doing this. Yeah, you can see here, I forgot completely forgot to do the nose on my first pass of shadows, but I'll come back to that as I go along. And the second shadow is always a quicker, just uh, really showing the areas I want there to be. This is a bit darker, look at this. And as you can see around the head, it really brings out that head shape, different from the ears because of the colour change. The nose as well, messed around with that. It was a weird shape. I wasn't really paying attention when I was doing this. I was watching a film, so uh, a slap on my wrist there telling me not to do that next time, really focus on the piece. Moving into Photoshop, as you know, scratch disc issues are always full. I had to play around with that. Also rasterizing it. I had this kind of idea that I wanted the pastel purple because I felt like that really wasn't popping as much as it should. Um, adding up my uh, guidelines here, to get the perfect box, it's 5% around the whole way. I think my canvas here is 420 millimeters by 420, so it's just bigger than A3. Just so then with my DPI 300, the quality is a lot better. If I decide to move this into a, a digital, on digital, sorry, a physical piece of work. And then mess around here with the uh, things. I think I was looking into ruler fits, um, but I knew that definitely wanted a, a nice strong background to stand out, but also not be too overpowering, so we messed around. Uh, but in the end, again, went with the purple, a bit more pastel. Uh, as you see here, it just doesn't stand out like that. Yeah, a lot of playing around though. Looking back on it, I forgot actually how much playing around I did. It was uh, first, you know, that thick border to stand out with that colour. I think that really worked out. This is where I put the pastel in to make it really pop. Because uh, as you can see when I add it in here, it just kind of adds that extra little section of it. Even though I need it to be a little bit lighter, it really does start to stand out.
it wasn't really until the uh, next stage when I thought what did I want in the background I thought again I'd keep her uh, in the style of the yellow standing out with it and I think it's called the Fleur de Lis I'm sure I said that wrong uh, so you know tell me if I did please correct me I had the idea of that because it's kind of French royalty uh, kind of time but what I did want to have is kind of like pattern that went up and down almost like a, a repeating zigzag pattern I know you can do that if you're working on the illustrator program you could set up one and just brush it on it'll all work out perfectly but I don't know how to do that I'm gonna wrap my head around it so I will be there don't worry but I just started messing around with it and I thought you know once you get one side done one strip you can then copy and paste move it over and get it into the perfect it took a lot of concentration though because you want something that doesn't look like it's um, been placed there but like it's actually a repeating pattern but then if you don't know how to do it it's a lot of messing around so please uh, bear with me it's a long process um, but it did take a bit of time this is actually sped up I think by 300% so obviously you can imagine the thought process that went into it but again like I said I'm no wizard Photoshop, I just know the basic tools and know how to structure everything the way I like, so you know, don't, uh, don't bombard me with questions asking me all the critical key commands. I know a few, but I'm not exactly going to tell you about all the information of everything, how I laid this out. It's a lot of playing around uh, to get it going. I'm just here moving around because I've got that next layer, the next section done, happy with that, moving into that next one and now I've got those two and I know the distance between it, perfect, it fits in, uh, I just got to play around with it to make something I visually think looks good. My only issue here was it felt a bit flat and boring because you didn't have the half cut offs to make it look like it was a full pattern, so this is my next thing, I'm just kind of messing around, moving it around and then uh, cut all my excess off that I don't need, put the colour on add it all in I'll be happy but like I said this is probably the I'd say the most mentally straining section was adding all these little details in so yeah you'll see me I jump back in I've got it all laid up I had to cut a big section out there because it was just boring and watching it back wasn't fun either um, we yeah, got the pattern done the trick here is you hold control or command on the layer image and then you hold the G tool get your uh, paint gradient fill it in with the color you want on the new layer and then you can play around with it. Again, resizing here. Just now I'm in that final stage, I can mess around with it. Say, do I want it this big? Do I want it smaller? What are my thoughts? But no, I was really happy with it. Kind of gave off that nice royal French vibe, you know? If anyone played Assassin's Creed Unity out there, that's the kind of thoughts I was getting from it. And then just adding in my signature. Uh, classic stuff, you know how it is. This time it was a black one. Uh, I thought that really stood out a lot more. But yeah, no, I was really happy with this one. and. After this, you'll see it on the screen there, just a nice little uh, end image, all in full. But no, I'd like to get your thoughts on it. What did you think? How did you think I went? I think I've got some more stuff coming out later. Um, got to really look through, think it. I've got a nice dog one coming up I did for someone. So as usual, hopefully you guys like it. Uh, send in love, positive vibes only. It'll be uh, a great week, guys. And if you haven't seen it, we've got a podcast. They've all been moved to this channel. So I'd say get a watch on that, see how you think. And I'll catch you in a bit. Bye.